Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, today we're going to try to clean the injectors on the C1. Uh, not because there's anything noticeably, noticeably wrong with them, um, just because we, well, it's, it's, as you can hear now, it's just purring beautifully. You know, I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit vibrate, but that's just because there's a cylinder missing, I think. Um, but we're just going to try and make it, we'll see if we can make it any better and uh, we'll take the injectors out, see what the floor's like on them and then we're going to bath them, give them a good bath and see if it makes it any better. This job, and quite an essential part of this, is to take the injectors out. Now, first we're going to unplug them. Mm, that feels a bit baggy. As usual, when they get all these clips, they don't just want to block the way they need to. So we'll do that with all other ones. You see them little tabs there? Just squeeze it and pull it. Next on the agenda is... Oh, that's tighter than I expected it to be. That is a 12mm and another 12mm, which holds the injector rail on. Let's just crack that off because these buzz guns, cracking little buzz gun, don't work very well with extensions on it. The flex sort of takes the hammer action away and then they don't do fuck all. So let's crack them off and get that disconnected. I think these are the bolts. We'll put them in there for the next person that wants to use them. And then this just lifts off. Now there is going to be a lot of wires and shit in there. But hopefully we can pull that up enough just to take the injectors out and it looks like this is holding it in place oh let's investigate that further very nice this is in the way so we're going to try if we can get rid of that and then just sort of wiggle it out I think I need to push this down and get it off the rail first and then pull the rail out to the side. And I can't really demonstrate. Right, I'll just tell you, I'm going to push that and I'm going to lift this. And then hopefully when that's disconnected from that, the all important all ring that's still on number two is up inside the rail so before we need to refit it we need to put that back on just let's remember that and then they just pull out there you have it three oh, quite dirty injectors to be honest with you right i should have done this before taking the injectors off but each wire each plug has a common pink so this is pink and black that's pink and white and this one's pink and red now neither of these connect to us. Right, so that's open circuit to us. So the way that these injectors are driven, well, this is what I'm assuming, is that the pink is a permanent positive feed to each injector, and then each other wire earths through the ECU. So that is how it fires the injectors, how it's triggered is through the ECU earth in the circuit. So if we look at the plug, that means that the one on the injector, the furthest away from this is the positive. Clean these, but we want them to open and shut while they're in the cleaner. So what I've rigged up is a circuit with, nice and simple. That's a flasher unit for indicators on a bike. And when I connect this up, as you can hear, that's going to be opening and closing whilst it's ultrasonically cleaning. I'll just show you something else as well. Good time to put into practice my new thing that I've got. I got sent this by a crazed fan of the channel. Crazed fan of the channel, right? And it's actually. It's actually a tripod from the phone. I mean, should we give that a go? And I'm, I'm going to put up a picture of who got it me as a sponsorship deal. 
um, from, from Craig with his recovery wagon and his coach. Um, top lad actually. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's put this on and then we can see the two hands how it's functioning. Right, so this is my test rig, and as you can see, it's just perfectly wired up. Now, we've also made, yes, that is just an old drilled in the end of a tyre valve with a valve core took out to put against here. And then we're gonna see what the spray pattern's like on each injector. Right, so this is number one. Right, press it. Go on. Keep it on just lightly. Right, that's number one. Right, this is number two. And number three. They've got the nicest one so far, I think. Right, so this is the cleaner. And um, we're just gonna put it on for 10 minutes. That's what we're, 10 minutes. Uh, and I'm gonna cycle it, not constantly because the duty cycle's too long with this flash unit and the injector seems to be getting a bit warm. And I've got the uh, terminal stuck out of water and um, we're going to turn it on. And we'll probably all turn around. And then we're going to cycle them. And then we're just going to keep on cycling and checking them off and then see how that happens. Oh yeah, this is just a carb cleaning solution which mixes with water, which I wasn't 100% in favour of, but I don't fancy filling it with, with carb cleaning and blowing myself up or setting myself on fire, so we'll try this for now. Yeah. Um, Looking online, it's just what people use, so see if it works. I'm not sure if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but a lot of white shit just come out of that one. I don't know if that's dirt coming out or if it's the inside of the injector dissolving, but we'll soon find out, won't we? finished and they look cleaner so now we need to clean off the you get the picture I'll have to hold them and do it but we're going to clean off the, the solution and then just blow through them to clean it out and then we'll blow some more car cleaner through them Front Dalek coming at exterminate them. Exterminate. Exterminate. Right, go and press it. Nice oh, look at that pattern. Oh, yeah. Right, let's try others. I'm getting a thing that's a Dalek sound. Want them again? Oh, look at that. It's going to be fucking overfueling now, isn't it? Try again. Last one. Yes. Straws come out. Put it back in. No. There we go. You would make a good Dalek. Exterminate! You are an enemy of the Daleks. You must be destroyed. You would make a good Right, so next is to put these back in. Now before we put them back in, we're going to just give these O-rings a spray with a bit of WD-40 or equivalent so we're not naming brands you see because we're using TT stuff here but there we go. 
and we'll do that with them all. Right, so putting them back in is going to be the reversal of taking them out. Now we've cleaned the ports as good as we can. So we're just, uh, just dropping all to start with. She's got them all in place and then the rail just pushes down onto them. I mean, it's, they just sort of push down and then the seals slot into there and then the bottom seals go into there. It's just, they just push in and then the rail tightens up onto them. And that's, yeah, I'm just going to do it up these two 12 volt clamp bolts and that clamps it down and holds the rail down onto the injectors. So we'll just nip that up. Alright. These we just plug back in. Oh yeah, first we'll put this back on. If you remember we took this off. Let's put that back into place. There's one injector. Two injector. And then there's another one. Alright, now let's put the uh, air filter back on. It's all leaks really, so let's start it. So that took a bit. Because that's to refill the fuel lines. And it seems to be running alright actually. Seems to be behaving so far, but we're not driven it yet. Now, we've seen the uh, spray patterns, and it did seem to actually clean them out and put more fuel through. Now, this car is a closed loop injection system. Basically, it's got a map sensor on the input, throttle position sensor, decides how much fuel it wants to put in, and then it corrects it from the Lambda sensor. So, it trims the fuel. Um, so if the injectors are a bit clogged up, it'll up, it'll do the duty cycle a little bit more to add more fuel. So it'll compensate for slightly clogged injectors. So we might not notice any difference. Um, we might notice any difference, it might be worse. It might have to recalibrate itself. Um, you know, it might have to retrim the ECU, but we'll find out when we drive it. Or we'll be found out then, won't it? Uh, so as for, does it make any difference? Well, it's running now and I can't actually feel it, barely feel it ticking over. So it does seem to be a little bit smoother. And does it drive any different? Well, I'm in fifth gear now, doing just over 30 mile an hour. Which, in all honesty, I mean, it's something this car's never been good at. I mean, it's still a one litre. Now let's see what it's like higher up the rev range. Like if you're cruising and you feather the throttle, it does seem to be more responsive from that respect. So, would I recommend doing this? Well, if you've got the stuff to do it, give it a bash. Why not? It's not going to. Um, it's not going to turn a Citroen C1 into a Ferrari. But if you've got any issues with your injectors, it could sort them out. It does feel a little bit more peppier. I mean, it's not, it's not night and day, but it's noticeable. So yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that anyway.